Hi everybody, this is Paul from Ad Espresso and welcome to our March webinar. Uh, we're delighted to welcome back Chiara Iacoponi from Google. Um, she's based in Milan, just like the Ad Espresso office. Um, I'm going to let her do her own introduction. I know she's got a slide on that in a minute. But before that, I just want to say thanks to the whole Google team for their continued support um, by providing training for everybody at Ad Espresso. It's really appreciated. Um, so just before we kick off on today's training, it's just a couple of slides that I'd like to um, present to you, just like the housekeeping for today's webinar there. Um, so first of all, the most common question we always get asked, uh, are we recording? Yes, we are recording. And we'll send you a copy of this by email about an hour after the end of the presentation today. It's also going to be available on our website at adespresso.com forward slash webinars and also on YouTube. Just search for Adespresso there and you'll find it. Um, so we'd really like to welcome your questions today. We're going to get through to your questions um, at the end of the session there. Also, if you just want to give the uh, the little the chat box a, a go there, if you want to put in um, where you're joining in from today, that'd be really appreciated. We'd like to know uh, where in the world you're joining us from. But yeah, we're going to have a special guest at the end, uh, Enrico from our Marketplace team, who's going to be answering the questions along with Kiara there. Um, now, as you go through this webinar, if you find that you want some more help, that you want a, an overall kind of guide to Google, we've actually prepared this on our website. It's completely free. There's not even any sign up required there. Um, so the Google Ads uh, Ultimate Guide, just go to adespresso.com uh, forward slash guides and you can read that online there, our ultimate guide there. Great, can see plenty of you logging in, so that's really good. Thanks for uh, putting there. Got Delaware, Lakeland, Florida, Pittsburgh. You can see some others there as well. And finally for me, just let you know about our April webinar. We're going to be changing topic and talking about Facebook Messenger chatbots there with Larry Kim, who's the CEO of Mobile Monkey there. Um, so that's enough from me. So what I'm going to do is just hand over to Kiara. So just going to hand that over to Kiara. Hi, Kiara. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Paul. Thank you for inviting me. Allow me two seconds and I can um, show my screen and we'll get started. Sure. I think you should be able to um, see my screen now, right? Yes. Um. Perfect. So hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar about Google Ads. So actually, uh, while I was preparing this presentation, uh, the more content I added and the more I figured out that the title, How to Master Smart Bidding with Google Ads and Machine Learning Power, was actually not the most fitting. So we have a last second announcement. I've changed the title to this uh, webinar because today we're actually uh, going to talk about something else. So we won't be talking just about smart bidding. The reality is we're going to discover how each of you can unlock growth for your own business uh, through automation, leveraging Google Ads, machine learning, and smart bidding. So stay with us till the end of the session, um, as I'm going to tell you how you could increase conversions by as much as 20%. So I guess I got your attention now. Uh, let's do the introduction first. So uh, who um, I am? Uh, as Paul said, uh, I'm Chiara, I'm from, uh, I'm from Italy. Fun fact is that I lived in four countries over the past seven years, and I'm currently based in Milan. Um, I work with Google Partners, and uh, specifically I support them in delivering advertisers uh, the best solutions and experiences with Google Ads. So uh, we, we'll be spending together the, the next 45 minutes, and bear with my <laughs> funny Italian accent. So uh, what are we going to cover today? Uh, first, we'll uh, uh, dig a little bit into machine learning and automation. Uh, uh, we will then move on to um, discover together how you can actually grow your business through smart bidding. And eventually, we'll see together how you can actually uh, evaluate smart bidding and measure the impact uh, it's bringing to, to your campaigns. So let's get started with the first topic. Um, for those of you uh, that I followed uh, that followed my last uh, webinar uh, together with Paul and Adespresso so, um, on how to get started with uh, a Google Ads strategy, this content will sound familiar. So last time we said that mobile fundamentally changed consumer behavior, um, and the growth in connected devices uh, has only been increasing since then. 
this is having a dramatic impact uh, on how we behave as consumers. Um, we can instantly and effortlessly find the answers to almost any questions in just a few taps. We're curious, uh, we research is, we're researching everything, uh, from video reviews of products that we're looking to buy to last minute travel deals. Um, Last time we talked about the super consumer, the, the super empowered consumer. Uh, this means that as users, uh, we are more demanding and impatient. Not only we, we expect high quality, relevant answers and information, but we'd also expect to receive them quickly. And uh, this inherent digital nature has given rise to complex customer journeys uh, with multiple intent rich moments across multiple touch points across networks, platforms, and devices. So as marketeers, it's necessary that we uh, really understand these fragmented journeys and how to engage with users throughout all of these moments uh, of intent. But to do so manually uh, would be extremely challenging. Uh, thankfully, uh, due to the advancements in machine learning, we're now able to understand um, how to act on consumer intent uh, in real time. So what exactly is machine learning? Machine learning takes a bunch of examples, uh, figures out patterns uh, that explain the examples, and then uses those patterns to make predictions about new examples. While machine learning wasn't a new concept, um, it was only in the past decade that computers got fast enough to support it. Uh, for decades, we programmed computers uh, by giving them a list of uh, kind of logical instructions to follow. Like, if this, then that. And for many applications, this programming approach, approach is great. However, it doesn't work in all situations. And particularly, um, it doesn't work for problems so complex that humans haven't figured out yet how to solve. So step-by-step -step instructions are impossible if you don't know how like all these steps uh, look like up front. Uh, machine learning is therefore can be described as a different ways, uh, as a different way of doing things, a different approach that tries to, to overcome these limits. So it's based on the notion that programming a computer to learn from examples to be smart may be easier than directly programming it to be smart. Let's take the movie, uh, a movie uh, recommendation example. So let's say that a billion people each tell us their 10 favorite movies. That's a bunch of examples that computer can use uh, to learn what movies uh, that people like have in common. Then the computer comes up with patterns to explain those examples. Like people who like horror movies uh, don't actually like romances. But people do like movies with the same actors in them. So then, if you tell the computer you like The Shining with Jack Nicholson, um, it can make a good guess about whether you'd like the romantic comedy, comedy uh, Something's, Gonna, uh, Something's Gotta Give with Jack Nicholson, and which are the videos to recommend uh, to you, for example, on YouTube. So the software that learns uh, is called a neural network. It very loosely uh, mimics the real brain made up of millions or billions of neurons, which are really just little computational units um, that each do a simple computation and then passes the info to connected neurons. When all of these neurons are connected as a large network, it can learn to recognize, uh, I would say, pretty complex patterns. And in deep learning, um, the neurons that are arranged in layers, um, where each layer learns patterns from the layer below it as you can see in this uh, in this animation so basically it learns patterns of patterns of patterns and this means that at the highest layers the neural net uh, can learn uh, very abstract patterns such as what hugs are or what a party looks like uh, that's why deep learning has become so popular uh, so how, that, how, how does that work in practice? Uh, the patterns that the machine learns can be very complicated and hard to explain in words. Let's uh, take the example of Google Photos, which lets you, lets you search photos uh, um, to find pictures, for example, uh, with your dogs. Um, how does Google that, do that? First, we get a bunch of examples of photos labeled dog, thanks to the internet. We also get a bunch of photos uh, labeled cat, and the photos with about a million other labels. 
then the computers uh, the computer looks for patterns of pixels and patterns of colors that help it guess if it's a cat or a dog or something else so first it just makes a random guess at what good patterns might be to identify dogs then it looks uh, uh, at an example image and sees if its current patterns get it right if it's mistakenly calling a cat a dog then it makes some tiny adjustment to the patterns uh, it's using um, then it looks at the cat image and again tweaks its patterns uh, to try to get that uh, that one right and it repeats it about a, mi a billion times uh, so look at uh, look at an example if it's not uh, getting it right tweak the patterns it's using to do a better job on that one example in the end the patterns form a machine learned model such as uh, such as a deep neural network that can mostly correctly identify dogs and cats and firefighters and many many other things now let's go back to the google ads within google ads machine learning leverages signals from over 8 billion users across uh, google's seven diverse properties uh, giving us does access to real-time rich user intent signals and insights um, that can be then used to power advertisers digital strategies it does this all at a scale that cannot be matched manually and in fact machine learning can process over 70 million signals uh, in just the blink of an eye and these breadth of signals allow advertisers to connect with consumers in the exact meaningful moments in which, in which they've shown intent studies show that leading marketers are twice as likely to invest in machine learning uh, we're dealing with so much data that machine learning is absolutely essential to drive growth if you use manual models while your competition is using machines <laughs> you're likely already are and will be feeling further behind them as time passes the question should not be whether to invest in machine learning it should be how soon and with machine learning present um, in many google Ads solutions actually it can be easier and faster to take advantage uh, of that even before uh, as I said, today uh, machine learning is present uh, across Google solutions, together helping advertisers achieve the best performance for their campaigns uh, by showing the right message to the right customers uh, in the moment of need. And machine learning does uh, the work to answer basically all of your marketing questions. How do I find my ideal audience? In the world of targeting, for example, we utilize machine learning to find people who aren't, aren't your customers but should be. How can I measure performance? Within the world of attribution, we utilize machine learning to understand the true drivers of conversion and assign uh, the right value. And this means that we are able to measure intent better through no less click uh, um, data driven attribution. And finally, we can, uh, we can capitalize on this intent uh, by tailoring our bids and creative ad assets to best respond uh, to the users. So machine learning can help us answer questions like how much should I bid per auction because uh, we can factor in countless signals to determine the optimal bid for each moment so that you can acquire more customers and eliminate uh, wasteful spending uh, but also for example what message do I show to my audience for creatives we use machine learning to help advertisers use the right message uh, for every auction and every user when you set out, you might think of just automating one activity, like targeting or bidding attribution, or maybe even just some aspects of a creative. But the best approach is to put it all together and let machines find um, and optimize end to end uh, to drive profitable growth. So think, think about it as a symbiotic optimization. So I really hope that in the next future, we'll be uh, also holding another uh, webinar to um, deep dive on other, um, uh, uh, another one of these topics. And today we're uh, going to dig uh, into smart bidding, uh, namely. So 10 years ago, uh, bidding was pretty simple. You chose keywords and specified bids uh, based on the likelihood uh, of that keyword to convert on a last click uh, desktop uh, or same session basis. Today, um, we have mobile devices which created more signals than marketers need to account for, like device type, uh, time, location, and these signals have increased uh, dramatically over the last years. Uh, we can track uh, more of them than ever before. And this wide breadth of data creates more complexity, but also more opportunity. The key to bidding strategically um, is to adjust your bids based uh, on each unique user's combination of these signals. So powerful machine learning technology now computes bids 
faster than ever before. And our real-time auction level bid adjustments offer unparalleled optimization and um, at a great scale. So, of course, as we continue to leverage large number of contextual signals uh, to drive results for your businesses, protection and anonymity of our users that will continue to be uh, our prime focus. So, how can we put smart bidding solutions into work for us? These automated BD strategies uh, can help you work faster as uh, we leverage machine learning cap capabilities to rapidly analyze millions of signals uh, uh, and variables, as, as we have just said. Uh, it also allows you to work smarter. Automating your bid management process frees up a lot of bandwidth to focus on more impactful and value-adding uh, strategic efforts. And at the end, this allows you to win more. You can uh, attain a better ROI without surpassing the financial limits that you have set. So it's all about fueling growth. Some of the strategies that we're um, that we'll be uh, discovering today actually have been in Google Ads for quite some time. Uh, but as the uh, marketing landscape uh, has changed over the past decade, um, our automated bidding strategies have to. And in fact, within the past year, we have made numerous enhancements to the smart bidding algorithms, such as factoring smarter audience signals, improving our interface, and we will soon make it easy to drive so visits. So it, here are some of the major updates. Um, the first, as I just said, um, involves smarter audience signals. Uh, so smart bidding algorithm uh, today incorporates automatically your uh, RLSA all visitors and all converters lists at account level, along with signals from affinity, detailed demographics, and in market audiences. So by leveraging audience lists at account level, um, our algorithms will automatically incorporate these rich user signals into any campaign running on smart bidding. And therefore, it automatically adjusts uh, bids for your key audiences. Uh, second improvement uh, is about location signals. So uh, today's smart bidding considers users' location of intent in addition to physical location. Um, and eventually, this is actually a coming soon announcement. Um, you will be able to drive store visits easily with target ROAS bidding type that we'll, uh, we'll uh, look at today. Um, basically, you'll be able to proactively set a value for what each store visit is worth to you along with values for your online conversions to drive both conversion types simultaneously. So very exciting, coming soon in 2019. Um, we've also adjusted the strategies to uh, better align with what our advertisers are, are asking for. Uh, so we are now moving toward fully automated BD strategies like maximize conversions, target CPA, and target ROAS, because uh, we know that these yield the best performance. So for example, during our testing phase, we've seen that conversion uplift is much higher in fully automated bidding strategies compared to, for example, a semi-automated bidding strategy using enhanced CPC. The great news is that smart bidding now works well with low or no conversion history campaigns. So getting started with both maximized conversions and target CPA strategies is easy, it's super easy. Both these strategies do not require minimal conversion number uh, to be eligible. So now that we have reviewed the benefits of smart bidding, let's identify the right strategy uh, to apply to your accounts. Here is an overview of each of our new and improved smart bidding strategies. And as I said before, most of us are already familiar and have seen success uh, with the CPC, so uh, with the enhanced CPC. So in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to illustrate each of our more sophisticated, fully automated strategies. Um, so that at the end of, the, of this webinar, each of you will be able to first identify the one that most suits uh, your needs. Second, implement it following Google best practices. And third, be able to measure the impact and evaluate smart bidding performance. Uh, step zero, and uh, this is something very, very um, close to my heart. Uh, step zero to a successful transition to automation uh, in digital marketing is to have a clear understanding of the different use cases of each automated solution in order to select the one that uh, is the most aligned with your uh, business goal. Where to find smart bidding in Adespresso and Utsuit ads? So you'll have the uh, option to uh, select uh, uh, the bid strategy uh, you prefer uh, during the campaign setting. Um, and as you can see here, uh, Adespresso uh, already um, has already integrated 
the three bidding strategies that, I, that we're going to talk about today. So let's start from maximize conversion. Uh, maximize conversion allows you to drive as many conversions as possible within a predefined budget. During our testing phase, we've seen an average increment of 20% of conversions when using maximized conversions instead of manual CPC on search campaigns. Maximized conversion is the right smart bidding strategy if first, your campaign is limited by budget and you want to be sure to take the most out of it, or you want to be sure that you are taking the most out of it. And secondly, you don't have a CPA of reference. So for example, when a campaign has just started, or you simply don't have a specific uh, CPA target. Because it doesn't require a minimum number of conversions to be activated, um, I tend to present maximized conversion as this strategy that allows advertisers to take the first step uh, towards automation applied uh, to bidding. Some best practices and tips uh, when uh, using maximized conversion. So as I said, uh, be sure to set your daily budget at the level you're confident you will spend. Uh, because max, uh, maximized conversion uh, will, uh, um, will basically use all of the daily budget that you set to the campaign. So some advertisers set to uh, set the budget way higher to what they're actually willing to spend, just to make sure that uh, they don't lose uh, impression shares throughout the day. Uh, with maximized conversion, the bidding strategy will spend We'll try to spend all of your set budget. So just make sure that you uh, set the budget at the right level of spending you're willing to uh, achieve. Um, you can use, as I said, maximize conversions on new campaigns without high, a historical CPA. Uh, when it comes to bid modifiers, you don't need them anymore because maximize conversions will take care of all of the modifiers, like mobile bid adjustments or um, audience bid adjustments. Um, these become redundant. And um, final flag, make sure that you exclude conversions that you don't want to optimize toward from the conversion column. So to sum up, maximized conversions allow you to gain the benefits of target CPA without needing higher budget headroom or and a historical CPA. I've added a few case studies for each of these strategies. And the first I'm going to share with you is about a Google partner called Seer Interactive that uh, experimented with maximized conversions for uh, one of its client, Trex. So the goal of Trex was to build brand awareness without adjusting uh, its existing budget. Seer uh, Interactive implemented maximized conversions uh, on a test campaign. And at the end of the test, they managed to increase conversion volume by 73% and conversion rates by 59% while decreasing CPA by 42%. And here you find a nice quote by uh, the PPC team lead uh, that participated in the um, produ production of, uh, of this case study. So it was actually uh, very much involved. Let's now uh, switch to target CPA. So target CPA, is the bid strategy that allows you to get as many conversions as possible while maintaining your CPA. So basically, the goal of the bidding strategy, and you should be using it, if your goal is to increase convention, uh, conversions without surpassing a given target of CPA that you've set yourself. Uh, it's important that in order to use these differently from maximized conversions, uh, your campaign shouldn't be capped by budget. So you, you should have enough budget headroom to, to make it work. Um, target CPA, when uh, getting started with the bidding strategy, should be set based on historical performance. And as I said before, the uh, very nice improvements that we, we were able to roll out in 2018 was that there is no minimum conversions uh, num conversion numbers needed anymore in order to use target CPA. Some best practices. In terms of budget, our recommendation is that you allocate a budget that is at least 10 times your target CPA. And as for the target CPA, when setting your target, uh, if you don't have like a reference amount in your head, uh, you could like our recommendation is that you take the last 30 days to set your, your target CPA. So look at the last 30 days, how your CPA uh, moved and take the average value. Super important, avoid changing the target more, more frequently uh, than every 14 days and of more than 
my recommendation is that uh, the first time you set your target CPA, uh, you leave it for like a couple of weeks like this, and then you try to decrease it by 10%. You wait till the campaign stabilizes around that target CPA, and if you wish so, you can decrease it to a further 10% less until it gets to a kind of a saturation point. Also in this case, bid modifiers are not needed anymore, and you should make sure that you exclude conversions you don't want to optimize towards from the conversion column. So overall, the uh, unique selling proposition on target CPA is that with, the, with this big bidding strategy, you can get the biggest revenue and performance uplift when integrated revenue data is not available, meaning when you're not tracking conversion value. And within Adespresso, uh, you can set target CPA bidding strategy either at campaign level, like this screenshot is showing you, or you can also create a new portfolio strategy. You can therefore create a bidding strategy that you can then apply to more than one campaign. Also in this case, uh, um, a success story by Grips offered, offered and portal AG. Uh, so this client wanted to maximize bidding efficiency without adding more time to daily management workflow. They ran an experiment using target CPA on multiple high volume campaigns for two, three months. We'll talk about experiments later. And they managed to uh, achieve a 38% higher conversion rate and decrease the CPA by 28. I really like the uh, quote by their CEO because I think that most of us can actually sympathize with him. Uh, he said that actually uh, the, the team was very, the, the company was very nervous to change uh, targeting and um, the bidding strategy. But uh, the uh, Google Ads feature added experiments uh, allowed them to make decisions based on real performance data, minimizing risk. We'll talk about this later. Uh, my, my, my opinion is that um, experiments are the best way to, to get started with smart bidding. And uh, let's now go to target ROAS. So target ROAS allows you to get the highest conversion value possible at a given return on ad spend, that is ROAS. And uh, it allows you to increase conversion uh, value um, by as much as 35% uh, when applied to shopping campaigns. Um, also in this case, campaigns should not be cut by budget. And as for target CPA, also target ROAS should be based, uh, uh, should be set based on uh, um, historical performance. This bidding strategy uh, requires uh, a minimum number of conversions, uh, which should be uh, at least 15 conversions over the last 30 days. So when it comes to budget, if you cannot increase it, at least make sure to adjust the target to control spend. So target ROAS is budget agnostic, which means that uh, the bidding strategy does not account for budget settings. So when a campaign is budget uh, uh, capped, the bid strategy has no way to understand this. And we set the ads as it would if the campaign had no budget limitations. This may result basically in the strategy going for pricier auctions that it expects to convert uh, earlier in the day with the intention of getting more cheaper uh, conversions uh, later in the day. So in other words, when the uh, budget uh, uh, in a campaign becomes exhausted, uh, this prevents the system from entering the auctions it was, expected, it was expecting to be able to enter later in the day and hit the target. Uh, a budget limitation can, of course, uh, um, negatively affect uh, target ROAS ability to hit the target, and performance will be significantly degraded. This is why um, our recommendation is to have a completely uncapped budget or adjust the targets to control spend. It is important to, uh, of course, keep in mind that the performance uh, impacts of a budget limitation becomes more severe the more uh, limited the budget is. Going to the target ROAS. Uh, as for target CPA, a good practice is to uh, look at the average ROAS over the last 30 days to set, to set the target. And also in this case, avoid changing the target more frequently than every 14 days and of more than 10%. Again, these smart bidding strategies take care of all of your bid modifiers so they become redundant. And uh, again, make sure you exclude conversions that you don't want to optimize towards uh, from the conversion column. So target ROAS is the bidding strategy for you. Um, 
if you go, if you want to get the biggest revenue and performance uplift when you have um, integrated revenue data, meaning that uh, you are tracking uh, conversion value. Case study from another uh, panels of, uh, panel of ours, uh, Reasonel, um, for the client Ocean France. The goal of Ocean France was to increase Rouen, uh, uh, ROAS of uh, its shopping campaigns uh, while maintaining high traffic and sales volume. Uh, they used the uh, um, shopping target ROAS strategy to manage uh, test campaigns, and eventually they managed to increase the ROAS by 34%. Conversion value by 18%, and also the agency gains a lot of uh, operational efficiency. And uh, the co founder of Reasonel uh, shared with us that actually they studied from the uh, high volume ad groups, and based on the positive results of the test, they were then uh, mo moving uh, on to uh, change the bidding strategy also to lower volume, uh, lower volume uh, campaigns and ad groups. So, I know that by now you might have many questions in your head, but hold on for other uh, like for five more minutes because I really want to cover uh, the evaluating measure parts. As many advertisers just jump to the conclusion that smart bidding doesn't work for them simply because they're not doing or measuring it right. So that's a topic particularly close to my heart. So first of all, to get an accurate understanding of your performance when using smart bidding, it's paramount that you don't run your analysis too early. There is, in fact, this concept of the learning period, which is the ramp-up time of the BD strategy that, on average, takes at least two weeks. And it's highly influenced by historical data available. So for example, if you're using maximized conversion on a new campaign, which is fine because you don't need minimum amount of conversion, you should also be expecting the learning period to last a bit longer. Um, that said, as I said before, I really like experiments um, as tools to evaluate smart bidding performance and move forward, uh, move forward uh, toward automation. So experiments uh, um, allow you to test changes you have made to your campaign, holding all other viable constants, uh, and determining whether the changes were statistically uh, valid. For example, we can use experiments for smart bidding when comparing manual CPC versus maximized conversions, target CPA or target ROAS, but also third-party bidding versus target CPA and target ROAS. So experiments uh, within Google Ads should be run for four weeks minimum. And it's also very important to split budget 50-50 before um, between the uh, control campaign and test campaign. So here is just a recommended uh, experiment timeline by week. Week one, you could create and launch your experiment. Then week two or three uh, should allow for the algorithm to learn and adjust. Week, uh, weeks four and nine, uh, smart bidding testing period is uh, happening. And eventually at week 10, uh, you should have enough data to uh, make a solid evaluation of the um, campaign. How to measure the impact of smart bidding? There are ge generally two, uh, two methodologies, let's say. Um, the first is target metric comparison, which is the one I strongly recommend, as you can see, and the uh, pre and post metric analysis, with, uh, which I don't really recommend. Let's look at the target metric comparison. So we have two reports that allow advertisers to perform a target metric comparison to measure smart bidding. The first is that uh, the bid strategy report, which is available for any campaign using a, a smart bidding strategy, whether you're testing it directly on the campaign, so you have already applied smart bidding permanently to the campaign, or whether you're using an experiment. And then there is the experiment report, which is, of course, available only when testing smart bidding with um, experiments. Um, Let's look at the bid strategy report. So this report is accessible either from the campaign management tab or in the shared library. And uh, bid strategy reports are the best way to analyze campaign performance. Um, it's a snapshot into the performance of the smart bidding strategy um, for you to understand the strategy status and also potential limitation. Um, the report provides a high level view of um, specific smart bidding strategies and lets you uh, monitor the performance of uh, some of key KPIs over time. It's also an easy way to spot issues or success in specific bidding strategies. Here is an example. 
So let's see if you're able to spot two relevant pieces of information that the report is giving us. So the first, we can check whether the strategy is still in the learning period or not, as you can see here from the green box. And secondly, in this specific example, if you look at the bottom of the graph, um, we can see quite few events that, uh, as the little icons uh, signal, uh, have prevented a smooth ramp up of the strategy itself. For example, we can see that the advertiser changed the budget during the learning period, causing a partial reboot of it. Then we have the experiment uh, report, which is uh, available to uh, all the experiments uh, uh, that uh, you set up in Google uh, Ads. Uh, as you can see, there is a first panel recapping the setup of the experiment, like the split 50% and the starting date, the campaign, uh, um, the control campaign. And then there is this panel, which is, of course, the, the most interesting one, where you can monitor the uh, key performance indicators and um, you will see the, the results, the, movement, the movements, and the blue asterisk here signals a result that is statistically valid, and here in brackets you see the confidence level. So for target metric comparison to be carried out correctly, it's very important to understand which are the uh, key performance indicators for each of the bidding strategy and how does success look like. So let's, let's start from maximize conversions. If you want to measure the impact of this bidding strategy, the KPIs you should be looking at are, of course, the number of conversions and uh, the conversion rate. How does success look like? A successful maximized conversion experiment uh, will increase the total number of conversions compared to the control campaign while spending the campaign budget. So always uh, uh, remember the use case for, for, for these um, bidding strategies because uh, KPIs always derive uh, from it. Target CPA. Key metrics are, again, number of conversions, and in this case, CPA. And we achieve success with target CPA when we increase the number of conversions while achieving a stable CPA or achieving our target CPA. And eventually, for target ROAS, we look at total conversion value and average ROAS, which is conversion value over cost. And success uh, is achieved when we increase the total conversion value while achieving the set target ROAS value. Let's briefly talk about pre post metric analysis and why I don't recommend it. Uh, so this uh, this methodology uh, implies the comparison from, for example, two weeks before switching to smart bidding to that of the two weeks after the learning period. And uh, you compare the performance of your key metrics for each of these two periods. I don't recommend it but because there might be many additional variables that may be influencing the KPIs. So this is why uh, such an approach might lead to conclusions which are actually inconclusive. So we might all be feeling a bit like this right now, but we are um, we have achieved the, the end of the webinar. So just let's just recap all this. We've seen how learning uh, machine learning and automation can allow us marketers to capture intent rich moments and the full win customers and fuel growth. And specifically, we talked about smart bidding strategies as efficient and effective enables of growth. It is paramount to select the strategy that best aligns to your business goals and implement it following Google's best practices in order to be able to uh, draw uh, solid results. Um, smart bidding can be easily tested by a Google Ads experiment, and uh, target metric comparison is the recommended approach to measure, to measure impact. Here is a very simple action plan for you starting today, actually. So you can start preparing your uh, bidding transition by identifying the best smart bidding solution for each of your campaigns. Um, implement then these new solutions. Uh, I, I strongly recommend experiments because to me, it's the, the way to minimize uh, risk and get uh, solid conclusions via the experiments report. Uh, of course, always remember to allow time for the algorithm to learn. Uh, and adjust to meet your campaign goals. And then uh, after three, four weeks, you should already be able to assess uh, uh, your performance and get some preliminary results. So review your bidding performance uh, over the last um, 
couple of weeks and if needed at that point make uh, minor adjustments to continue optimizing performance so that is all for me thank you very much uh, for staying here for for the entire duration if you're still uh, connected and uh, we can start the q a time Thanks, Kiel. That's a really good presentation. There. It's really good to see some insights into um, how Google has been developing and just be able to save 20 to 30 percent on your campaign goals. And um, plus saving time is just really amazing there. Um, so I've got plenty of questions coming in. So we'll open this up to both you and Enrica. I'm going to start with one here from Francesco. Um, Francesco is asking, um, why was smart bidding that you can start from day one now rather than needing 30 conversions like you used to? That's a great question. Uh, I think that uh, Francesco already got his answers, uh, but just as a reminder for, for all of you, uh, maximize conversions and uh, target CPA um, as of uh, 2019 uh, do not require any more a minimum amount of conversions. Uh, so these are the two bidding strategies that you can get started with any campaign, either, even a new one. Of course, you have to then be aware of the fact that the learning period might just take a bit longer uh, because the amount of data available at day zero uh, on the campaign is zero. Uh, in these cases, if there are other campaigns um, enabled at account level, um, our kind of learning patterns and algorithms still try to draw some kind of uh, conclusions to guide bidding from um, from the data available at account level when data at campaign level are not there in the very first days of smart bidding activation but of course overall we should be aware that the learning period will will, will take a bit longer awesome and next question is from uh, nick hill hopefully i've got that right on um, just asking whether you can provide any like pdfs or notes is there a good um have you got any kind of resources to find out more about this so yes i would uh, recommend everybody to visit both the uh, google ads uh, app center uh, also know that uh, at espresso website is full of great content um, and also there is another resource uh, which is called think with google uh, i don't know how many of you are familiar with it but it's basically a great uh, online collection of case studies and market insights uh, uh, researches uh, uh, made by google uh, that are available to any advertisers uh, online for free great and enrico is there any resources that you kind of use like any blogs or podcasts or any training portals that you use well, sure. Uh, I, I always uh, look at the thing with Google that, that Chiara just said. Um, there are also a bunch of other blogs uh, that are really interested. I don't have the name, uh, so I'll just write down something for you to, to share or just search for it right now. But I actually have a question, if I can, <laughs> of <course>. for Chiara. <laughs> sure, go on. Well, first of all, thank you, because it was really a great presentation for me as well. It was really interesting to learn yeah. about the new, um, you know, the new updates on, on these smart strategies. Uh, my question is, is quite simple. Is, is there any um, example or any case where you suggest to use uh, the manual bidding strategy? Hmm. That's a very, very uh, good uh, question. Uh, <laughs> To be honest, uh, my answer is it always depends, right? Uh, mm -hmm. It depends uh, on the kind of an account structure, what the, the real need is. Uh, to be honest, as I, um, as I continue to receive more and more success stories, also from clients that we directly manage here at Google and success stories from partners, I could, I could think of fewer and fewer cases where manual CPC would still be, let's say, the, the way to go. Just because, I don't know, if you, it, it's just impossible to deal with all these signals, right? Yeah, sure. So my <laughs> my short question is like, it's a bit outdated. Uh, even for my, my personal campaigns, as of today, I wouldn't be using manual CPC. 
Okay. Because the, the, the idea that uh, we can start with zero, you know, zero conversion history, that's something that uh, makes me think, you know, because it's, it's always hard to trust uh, from day zero uh, smart strategies. So that's, that's something I, I will really test uh, because that's interesting to know. But for sure, it's hard, you know, to trust that from the beginning since you don't have any data. So that's interesting. I, I will sure test that. Um, let you know my opinion. <laughs> yeah, that's true, and you're totally right. It's uh, it, it's hard, but also because uh, like uh, I don't know, like we, we tend to to treat campaigns as our children, right? We really want to protect them to ensure that performance is uh, uh, keeping on like steady and keeps on improving. Uh, mm -hmm. But at the same time, so uh, I've seen like many of our advertisers jump into the conclusion that, as I was saying before, my bidding doesn't work simply because they were not uh, kind of aware of what the real and uh, necessary step steps to uh, get started with it were. Uh, so mm -hmm. as soon as you are aware of the learning period of some like simple tricks uh, that you should pay attention to during the setup stage, uh, you're setting, the, you're setting, you're setting the, the stage for it to work, right? Mm -hmm. Great, okay. In the meantime, I just found out um, the name of the blog, sorry, Paul, that I was mentioning, which is not only about, about Google Ads, but also, also about uh, advertising in general, but usually it has a very great content about Google as well, which is wordstream.com. I'm sure you know that. Yes, and, and we've got Larry Kim, who he founded Wordstream on our next webinar. He's now doing Mobile Monkey Chatbots. Yeah, great. So he's a he's a great guy. So um, yeah, I yeah. Well, I love the blog. Usually, it's always on time. You know, with the biggest news. Excellent. So we've got loads of questions here. So we'll probably just go through uh, a few of these. We'll answer as many as we can. Um, the thing that I've picked up. Um, I've, I'll combine two questions into one. Um, Nora's asking about the excluding conversions. Um, asking for some tips or examples on that. And Brian's questions very similar, asking how you can exclude um, conversions that, from the conversion column. Yes, uh, so this is a very important point, so thanks for, for, for raising it. Um, so I, I'll take it a bit high level. Generally, um, with your uh, with your campaign, uh, you, should do, you should look at two types of conversions. Macro conversions, which are like the end action you want to achieve, like leads, calls, uh, online sales uh, and so on but there are also a tons of micro conversions that are instrumental to let's say drive consumers uh, down the funnel and make the macro conversion happen right and it's actually a good pra practice to um, track both macro conversions and micro conversions so for example for an e-commerce, a view, a view of a product page might be tracked as a micro conversion, and of course the sale is a macro conversion. The important thing with smart bidding is to make sure that the optimization algorithm um, work, works for optimizing bids to make macro conversions happen. That's why in the uh, conversion uh, setting tab within Google Ads, there is a line uh, which is called include in conversions and you can basically put a toggle either on yes or no and with this setting you will basically determine which conversion actions are taken into account by the google smart bd algorithm to optimize bids against uh, the macro conversion so the recommendation is put it on yes for your macro conversions while of course continuing tracking like also, uh, sorry, put it on yes for your macro conversion. I'm sorry, my Italian is not helping here. And <laughs> on no for micro conversions, which is still good to, to, to be tracking, uh, but you shouldn't be optimizing towards uh, a micro conversion, okay? Awesome. I agree, actually, if I can just add something, I agree with Chiara, I always do that. Uh, I, for example, for e-commerce, I usually, um, do you know micro conversions for all the checkouts so from out to cart payment uh, all the the steps towards the purchase and then i just leave the purchase as the main conversion 
uh, for Google to optimize on that. So I, I really suggest to do that because if you also track the rest of the conversions, then on the column, you know, all conversions, you will have also all that and that will help you um, check, you know, on keywords, for example, and see if they are at least uh, um, generating some of these micro conversions. So that may be useful as well to, to check the performance overall. Yeah, thanks for sharing the example, Erika. Thank you. <laughs> Great. I've got another question here from Sean, and, and I'll kind of give some context on this, is that quite a few Ad Espresso users have got are like small to medium businesses and have got fairly small budgets there. Um, so just thinking for some best practice tips for when you've got smaller budgets. So let me let me just give you an example that Sean's provided that. Sean's got a local service cleaning company and he's been told previously to use manual bidding and manual settings um, and he goes on to say that he doesn't get many clicks or impressions to gather much data so um, what bidding should he try and should he be using smart bidding so any tips you can have for small budgets there please another great question thanks guys for raising so many interesting points so i will try to kind of split my answer into two parts the first is the short one and at least based on like my personal experience, I've seen maximized conversions working very, very well with uh, um, even small budgets. Um, that said, um, I think that then the, um, let's say, uh, the answer is a bit broader uh, because of course, uh, depending on the uh, kind of uh, vertical sector uh, that your business is uh, operating into, uh, your average conversion um, average conversion cost, your average CPA uh, might be at a certain level, right? Um, so my short answer is try to use maximize conversions, but also try to understand if the budget you set is realistic for the vertical your business operates. Because, you know, like if you set a budget that is very, very low uh, in a very competitive vertical, uh, I mean, you're just out of the market, right? Um, so maximize conversion is also the right smart bidding strategy to go uh, because it operates at budget level. So actually it could also help you understand um, whether your average CPA reference might be. So I would suggest to, to Sean, try to uh, run an experiment with maximize conversions because it could also help you shed more light uh, what the what the average CPA um, what's the average CPA you should be looking at for your uh, for the vertical of your business and depending on the market uh, that Sean is um, is covering I know that there are also like nice like white papers and searches done by uh, local agencies on like benchmarks like average. Uh, conversion rate, average CPA for like specific uh, industries. So I would also recommend having a, having a look at like searching a bit online to, to find some, some kind of information like that. Excellent. And I've got another one, probably slightly different topic, but just asking about if you're limited by uh, impressions, and in this case is from Quinton saying that he's finding that he's getting limited with impressions on target CPA. So um, should he rotate bid strategies? And if so, which one should he go for next? I'm sorry, Paul, I really didn't get the question. Could you rephrase it? Yeah, he's saying that, um, he, um, he says, if we're finding that we're limited by impressions with target CPA, should we try rotating bid strategies? Um. So I'm not sure if uh, Quentin is referring to the fact that uh, the campaign is, like has a, an impression check cap due to a limited budget, because generally when a campaign is capped in terms of impression, it, it means it's also cut by budget. Uh, so if that's the case, then as I said before, target CPA shouldn't be the, the bidding strategy to go uh, because it requires a bit of budget headroom in order to play around with the average CPA and the algorithm to work. So those cases, I would again recommend maximize conversions. 
Excellent. And I've got, just got a couple of questions coming in about the recording. So just to recap that, we'll send everybody the video probably about an hour or so. It's done automatically after this session finishes. And um, somebody was asking about the blog that we recommended. So um, Enrico is recommending WordStream there. Um, I've got some more technical questions here, but I just want to try and keep it reasonably high level because we've got time for just about a couple more ones there. Um, let's have a look. Mariana was asking just, oh, actually, I'll take one from uh, Nick Hill, just asking for a recap on the learning phase. So just wondered if, if either of you could just give a kind of like a high level um, just definition of what the learning phase is for Google there. Yes, absolutely. I have to do that. So the learning phase uh, generally takes the first two weeks uh, after the bidding strategy, smart bidding strategy um, is applied to a campaign. And it's actually like a truly ramp up phase. So it's the phase when the algorithm uh, starts learning and developing and consolidating the prediction model uh, that will apply and like fine tune and refine uh, for, for the entire duration of the campaign, so potentially endlessly, uh, based on the amount of data available um, at the campaign level. So what I was saying is that if the campaign is a new one, um, the algorithm, in order to have at least some data to, to, to learn from, will either apply, either um, use other available data at uh, account level, that is from other campaigns, to try to have at least like a draft uh, um, prediction model to start from, or if it's the very first campaign of a very new account, it will draw the, alg the algorithm will draw from like other of millions of AdWords accounts uh, using like uh, uh, other like, let's say prediction models that were already built that were already built for other AdWords accounts, and we use it just as a starting point, uh, and we start then build on it and refining it as the campaign collects uh, more and more data while delivering uh, ads. So like the learning period is like really very simple. It's the ramp up time. So the time that it takes for the uh, smart bidding strategy to uh, define its prediction model and start fine tuning it uh, after the campaign gets like a solid amount uh, of data. Uh, th thanks for that explanation. So um, we've got some thanks coming in from Tori. Also, thanks from Bruno. We appreciate your thoughts there. I've got time for one more question. So I've um, got a question from Jennifer, who's saying that if she's using automatic bidding strategies and she's actually finding, you know, that they result in lower conversions and the lower ROAS, um, what's some of the reasons or even mistakes? So, you know, basically, how do you debug these campaigns when they go wrong? So um, let me bring in Enrica here, because um, I know she's working with lots of campaigns. And just Enrica, what do you do? If something's not working out, what, what do you do to analyze and then get things back on track? Well, uh, certainly I agree with Chiara that uh, the experiments are a, a very great tool to do that. Uh, I, I suggest to do that always before changing something very um, important like the bidding strategy as we are talking about. So the first thing I should do, uh, I would do is doing an experiment with a new uh, bidding strategy, then check the performance and see if the experiment were good or not. In this case, in the case um, that, that the campaign is not working, I will do again an experiment changing, you know, something uh, really important. It, it, it depends because, you know, you have to check a lot of data. It, it can be the business strategy, but also problems can be about, you know, landing page or the, um, the structure of the campaign or the keywords. There's a lot uh, to analyze. So you can just do a lot of, um, you know, that analysis and then start another experiment before changing something uh, in order to find what's, uh, what's not working so well for, for, from your point of view and from your data point of view, most of all. Yeah, I totally agree with Erika, and um, that's also since Erika said there is tons of analysis that you could be doing, and that's really the case. Uh, that's also why, um, as said before, we introduced the bid report strategy because most of the times, actually, um, 
I'm sorry to say that, but most of the time it's us advertisers ourselves that are kind of hindering the proper functioning of the of this marketing strategy. So if you remember, I shared the um, example of the uh, graph that was signaling a lot of events that were kind of disturbing the learning period from, from doing its work. Uh, so consider that every time we make major changes in the campaign uh, after having switched to smart bidding strategies, to smart bidding strategy, we, we're kind of delaying the, the moment where we'll, we're going to see like the, the good results coming in. Um, so definitely when you see like results that are not as expected, go to the bid strategy report, look at it, try to understand like first the status of the bidding strategy and then if there was any event uh, that kind of disrupted the, the, the functioning. And then also kind of uh, review the best practices and try to see if you miss something like is your budget capped? Are you using t uh, target CPA and your budget is capped? Then you should increase it. Or have you set an unrealistic target CPA? Things like this, you know? Excellent. So um, we're just going to wrap up today now. So um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Really good numbers on this webinar. Hope you've um, you've learned a lot there about how to save some time and just really increase your results with Google. Um, thank you, Chiara, and thank you, Enrica. I know it's uh, 7 p.m. on a Friday evening in Milan, so I really appreciate you uh, take care of the time for this. Um, I'll go and let you get some dinner now. Thank you for joining us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Enrica and Paul, for hosting me today. Yeah, thanks, Paul, and thanks, Chiara. It was really a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a nice weekend.